All right, I'm glad to see we got some folks out there. Not too, not too shabby at all. We're gonna get started here in just a second. Get our folks on Facebook a little bit better view. Our YouTubers a little bit better view. There you go. We are rocking. We are rolling. We got folks out there. We're gonna have a great time today, everybody. Let's get our angles awesome, right? Huh, huh, huh? Kill that crazy music and have a good old time. That's right, everybody. What is happening? Hello. Welcome to the Simo Cats. Let me turn myself down over here. Or I gotta listen to this loud mouth go on and on and on. Oh my gosh. Hey, Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, making it fun over on YouTube, which is center camera. We're multicasting, Simo casting this afternoon, and we eventually will get to the free motion project here underneath the needle. Um, I've got a printer running in the background. It'll be done in a second. If you can hear some weird noise over there, I do apologize. And, um, okay, we've also got Instagram here. Welcome, everybody. I hope you can hear me okay. I've got uh, Facebook also coming along today. We're having a absolute blast. Now, I want to talk about, of course, some of the things we've been doing to keep ourselves busy. So before we dive into free motion, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about free motion today. I want to make sure I can follow along everybody over here as well. Sorry, turning my comments on. Rock and roll, Mary Lou. Susan's out there loving it. Okay. Hey, watch for my mom today. Mom said she was going to follow along. Mom, if you're out there, let us all know who you are. We love having you along. The family's getting involved. This is great. Um, surf buddies, behave yourselves this time. Uh, <laughs> hopefully everybody got some waves today. So first forward, big piece of information. Let me slow down a little bit. Because huh, I am in a rush. I just got here uh, to the studio because I did just get some waves. Had a great time. Bad news, kids. They are closing the access to the parking lots, the beaches in Morro Bay um, starting tonight. And so I'm a little disappointed about that. But that gives me opportunity to start riding my bicycle to the beach. It's only a few miles. Disadvantages is uphill all the way home, uh, but I'll be rested when I get to the beach. So anyways, I might make a fun video. I'm gonna try to rig my kids' trailer, what they used to ride along behind my mountain bike in uh, to carry the surfboard and wetsuit. So this should be a fun uh, evening this evening. It's Friday night, uh, it's a live video, so that counts, I can say that. So yeah, that's an adventure I'm going to be going on here really soon. Um, I think that's kind of exciting. Uh, secondly, we will be giving away this beautiful batik bundle. This is what we call a big bad bundle of batiks. This is awesome. Uh, I love this. This is our tropical batiks from Michael Miller Fabrics. The reason we're going to give this away is we know several of you are at home sewing because many, many of us, and we all should be in my opinion, are sheltering in place. We're staying home, we're laying low, and we're having a great time with the crafts. Dog Winston's barking in the background. It's a live video. These things happen. We're having fun with it. So the big bad bundle of batiks is going to be given away on Monday. I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity because I only have one bundle left right now and I've got three cameras going. So what I want to make sure is you will all go to the batik prize post that will be over on Instagram on Monday. I hope I'm getting that right and we will be giving this away. But why are we giving the batik away? Because we've got a beautiful batik quilt we've been working on. If you've been following along in the videos, da 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 da. But just today, block number three, am I holding the right one up gang? I think I am. Block number three came out. And so we have this wonderful sew along. It's a 12 month sew along featuring Michael Miller Batiks, the uh, Jet Black from Michael Miller, AccuQuilt is getting involved. So these blocks can be AccuQuilt cut, or we also have free instructions that can be downloaded. So block three just dropped today. Blocks one, two, and three are available. Easiest way to get there is go to the michaelmillerfabrics.com uh, web page and then right there click the blog and then all of the information is over on the blog. Now the fun thing is is you know I've been hanging out a bunch uh, online digitally with our brand ambassadors and a bunch of our brand ambassadors have been playing along as well and so they're doing other inspirational content and videos and, and pictures and blogs and all kinds of fun things about our big beautiful this is called Peak into Batik 
and it's a really, really fun, easy sew along, but you're gonna learn a bunch of these wonderful centers of these different stars. Everyone is different, and you can use them uh, all uniquely. You can put them all together into a quilt. You could sash them, you could not sash them. It's, it's quilting, it's super fun. And so that's really, really exciting. And uh, anyway, so please get in on, on the fun here, block of the month, peek into boutique over on the Michael Miller Fabrics blog. Uh, so block three just came out today. Monday, we will give this prize away and it will be given away on Instagram. That's probably all you need to know right now. So make sure you're always following us. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, we are having a blast because they have locked me in my house, but I happen to have a film studio and a sewing studio all in the same room. How can I go wrong, right? This is awesome. Do a quick comments check, everybody. How's everyone doing? Oh, I see Cynthia's back. She loves the batiks. Joy, you're awesome. You make me, I love it. I love seeing you out there. Thank you for being here today, my dear. Okay, Randy's back. I love it. I love it. I love it. And third, and maybe uh, not as important to all of you, but as important to me and maybe Randy, because he's also a great musician. Look at this bad boy. If you do not understand what you were, oh, not looking at, knocking stuff around here. This is what is called a cigar box guitar. My good friend down the road, uh, his name is Brian, and he's a retired shop teacher, and all he does is work in his wood and metal shop now. And, uh, oh, he does a little lawn bowling as well. Anyways, so hopefully Brian's following along, but he has been teaching me woodworking, and that's how I got into making the pens and the pencils and the stilettos and all of that, and he's been supplying me with his in cuts. He made this thing basically start to finish, and the cool thing about this, Randy, this might be the guitar that sounds good when I play it because it's a three string, which means no matter how you play it, it's supposed to sound good, right? Not too shabby. Anyways, it's really fun. And so he's having his fun with his hobby. And I told you I wanted to take up a new instrument. And so I'm terrible with a six string guitar. So I'm hoping half of the guitar will do me some good. So we are, encouraging everybody out there to stay creative while you're staying safe and enjoy taking on some of these new hobbies you've always wanted to try. And I know there are a bunch of you that have wanted to try quilting, that wanted to get involved in uh, patchwork and machine quilting. And so that's something I also started to do with a little bit of my extra free time is this quilt right here. This is the recovery quilt. And the recovery quilt is a simple patchwork quilt that was designed by Lisa and Laura from Material Girlfriends. And I put up the interview yesterday over on Facebook. Please watch that. They are just wonderful. And they are such good sports. I actually, the first time I recorded the interview, I tried to do it with all these cameras and all this fancy technology, and I forgot the microphones. And I recorded, I made them sit for two hours we recorded, and I didn't capture any of it. And so we had to do it all again. So at any rate, they are great sports, but they talk about the importance of using the color green, especially right now, because it's a healing and calming color. You wouldn't know it by as excited as I am right now, of course, but they really strongly encourage me to work with the color green and work on a project that I wasn't uh, uh, designing, doing something that I could get away from what I was thinking about and just get directly into a pattern that somebody else created. So this is another free pattern. This is on the Material Girlfriends uh, site, and I have a link in the um, video yesterday that came out. I also have a link and um, on YouTube. I'm doing what I'm calling Q101, Quilting 101, and it's all using parts and pieces of this quilt as well. So I've been filming it in little pieces as I go along, and today I was filming filming the free motion machine quilting, and I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we do this live? Uh, machine quilting is something we get a lot of questions about, and people are always, um, <laughs> sorry, I like to read the comments as, as I'm trying to speak, of course, um, and uh, everyone wants to know what kind of dog I have. Uh, I have a Chihuahua mix who looks a lot like a very small Labrador, so we tell everybody when they're around him that he's a mini lab, and I just like to watch the ex expressions happen. He's a bird dog, he likes to bark at everybody. Um, you've met him, he's uh, in one of the last videos as well. So anyway, I was talking about videos, I was talking about YouTube. Fun, fun quilt along series we're doing here. And um, I just wanna talk a bunch about free motion and have some time to talk about free motion. I'm gonna stay on for probably another 15 or 20 minutes here. Um, 
when it comes directly to asking me comments today, I've got my, my wonderful, wonderful team, Susan and, and Sherry are there answering comments and trying to help with the feed on the cameras I can't see. I can see a little bit with what's going on on YouTube over here and that's kind of what I can watch at the moment. Um, so what I'll try to do is just kind of talk and, and do a little sewing. I was setting up for the video I was filming you. I don't know if you can see, but there's other big cameras and stuff all around. And so what I was just talking about with this project is starting in the very middle of the quilt. I've started right on that center diamond. And if you've never free motion quilted before, um, I'm going to really encourage you to actually check out these step-by-step -step videos because in the basting video, I'm talking about laying my backing out and the backing on the quilt. That's what I'm using here. It's this white fabric today. The backing and the batting, the fluffy fuzzy stuff, is larger than the quilt top. And I'm thinking you can see that right along here. And the reason we need to do that is the same reason we need to start in the center of our projects and quilt in a radiating outward direction, radiating from our center or wherever we've worked outward. So one of the tips I know I can provide for, for you here if you're brand new or maybe you've been quilting for a while but you maybe you've been getting some puckers, whether it's on the front or on the back of your quilt projects, often puckers come from when you start quilting in one area and then you go too far away and you quilt in another area. What you're doing is you're effectively trapping all of the batting and all of the backing and the quilt top in between those spaces. We're going to call them A and B. So as you now quilt, all of that stuff is, is trapped. So the reason that the quilt police uh, will tell you in your how to quilt uh, educational package there uh, to prevent misdemeanors and or major felonies, they want you to start in the middle of the project and, and quilt outward because what you're actually effectively doing is you're pushing the fabric excess out to the edges. And now uh, in the basting video, um, you'll hear it's not out yet. I think video today four is up, and so basting is probably number seven. So you've got a few days until basting comes around. But I'm using the safety pins, and I'm putting the safety pins about a shaka, a hang loose distance apart, right? And so for that reason, um, as I'm machine quilting, I'm going to quilt as I get near the pins, but I will release them because I'm going to start to see some texture and some buildup and all that kind of stuff. Now, what you can't see, because my thread's connected and I am not willing to cut my threads at this moment, but I will when I get to the green, um, is that there is a slow, a sew slip mat underneath the machine. I'm putting on my machine gears gloves right now because I really want to finish the pebbles that are in this white section so that I can then cut the threads. I can teach you how we're going to do that. And then I can move on to a re-thread, put the green threads in, and then I can show you what's underneath on the bed of the machine and talk a little bit about a few of the accessories and the feet and things. So at any rate, um, kind of my goal for today was, um, if you're like me, I usually quilt with music on, so you might want to just kind of tune me out and just enjoy watching. I love watching those videos on social media where folks are maybe like painting really fast and you, you know, you have no idea what it's going to be and then they turn it over and it's this incredible scene or they're carving up chunks of wood or the, the, the I, somehow I keep watching this gal in like Bali, like dig a hole and turn it into this wonderful swimming pool somehow and, and fill it with bamboo. I don't, anyway, so this is what I'm doing. I'm making pebbles. You might not even be able to hear me while the machine's running. Microphones are a little distance from now. But with pebbles, one of the keys is, is just to make circles, but complete those circles. And then sometimes I'll have to use the track of that same circle to go back around. Those of you who saw the new Juki video yesterday, these are the very fierce few moments of machine quilting now on the new Juki. And I gotta tell you, this thing is running like a champion. I'm using a hopping foot. I did play with both of the feet. I'm a big fan of a hopping foot. So that's what I'm gonna use, especially when I'm new to a machine. I like to use what I already know. I'm just doing a real basic design in here right now. And I'm gonna fill in all of this white space until I'm ready to get to the green because I want to use white thread in the white and green in the green. Okay, quick, can you all hear okay while I'm running the machine? Is, is, let me double check for comments here. Oh, this is gonna get fun. Okay, can you let me know? How about some thumbs up over on Facebook and that kind of stuff? Thank you. Can, okay, so you can hear okay while I'm running the machine. I wanna make sure that you're getting some information out of the deal. 
I'm seeing yeses over there. Oh, wonderful, everybody. Brad, thank you very, very much. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing this. Is this fun? Can you see a little bit? Would you like me to maybe bring all the cameras a little closer now? Let's do that. I was kind of set up for that anyways. Hang on, close your eyes, grandma me up. We're gonna get real close for a second. How's that looking? Pretty good? Fantastic. Okay. Wonderful. Now, I am standing right now while I am machine quilting. So one of the other things I can really talk a lot about is body mechanics. And body mechanics are key. And what I'm doing is all for the benefit of television here or, or social media. This is not the way I quilt when I'm really working on a project because I want to be comfortable. So right now, this is just because this is where this machine is, this is where the lights and the camera and the action are. So I'm going to try to do my best not to lean in, but if you see me leaning in like this, that's not proper body mechanics. We really want our elbows like at a nice 90 here. So I would normally be about right here on my machine and I'd be seated and I would be quilting nice and comfortably here in a chair, back straight, neck straight. I can see everything. This is really where I want to be like this, okay? So this is just real quick here. And um, like I said, after a nice round of surfing this morning and some standing machine quilting, I should be good and sore by the end of the day. Okay, I'm gonna follow the edge of a pebble back around because I stitched myself into a corner. And that's the fun thing about something like pebbles as a design motif is you can really use them and abuse them. You can use them to get in and out of the spaces very easily, but you always wanna complete them because if you don't, you're gonna get what look like more like the cobblestones. And cobblestones are terrific. They're pebbles that didn't work out. And then you can add in some triangles and some rectangles to make it look like all of that was intentional. Coming around. The other thing is, is though, if I am gonna follow a circle to get back to where I had left out, I don't wanna use the same path too many times. So if I've gone around a circle, Every time you lay thread into an area, even if it's the same color thread as the fabric, it's gonna add some visual density. It's gonna add some bulk. So we wanna to try to use, if we're ever using a circle for a path, maybe you wanna walk around one half of the circle once, and if you have to use it again, you'll go around the other side of the circle to get to that other spot. Hoping that makes a little bit of sense like that. So I've got about oh, um, a couple more second, or minutes worth of quilting to get the center done. And by the way, there's nothing more uh, intimidating than knowing you're all standing out there watching me. Of course, I also realize you probably can't see perfectly as good as I can, but maybe that's a good thing we should all talk about, is the galloping horse rule or the rule of it's good enough, right? Now, we all have our personal levels of satisfaction and our own personal levels of accuracy, but when it comes to machine quilting, I can tell you the more you do, the better you'll get. The better you get, the more you'll want to do. So by using, I don't know if I mentioned to this group already, like I said, I was filming earlier for the recorded videos. I'm using the white thread in the white space. I am not a fan of monofilament at all. I really like to match my threads instead of trying to use an invisible for a whole variety of reasons. But right now, if my stitch lengths weren't real consistent, you wouldn't be able to tell real well because uh, you can't see the distance in between the stitches because the thread matches so nicely going to fill in, working my way up to that little corner up there. I got a little bit more space back here. Once we get up back up to that other corner, we'll go ahead and pop this quilt off so you can see what's going on underneath the machine. Talk about a little bit more of this specifics, the technology, the hardware that we all love so much. Just a couple more circles. Don't cheat yourself. Complete them. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to me. 
Back around till I'm stuck. Okay, perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do, and I know you're a distance away, I'll try to see if you can see a little bit better. I've finished the pebbles in the center of the project, so I'm done with all of that white space. I want to cut my thread and move on so I can change colors and go to a different area. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take yet another few stitches in place. This is what I did at the beginning also. I am gonna now put my needle in the up position. I'm also gonna lift my presser foot because if you were watching on the maintenance video, I guess it was just yesterday, but when you put your presser foot up on a sewing machine, it opens your tension discs. So now I can just easily pull the fabric out. I can pull up here, and if I pull up here and I look close enough, I might be cutting, I hopefully I'm cutting the knot, which was those twists, of also, yes, it worked, the bobbin thread too. So I actually cut the top thread and the bobbin thread this way. Importance is I've left a nice long thread tail on the bobbin, which will make it easier to bring to the top when we get started here in a few minutes. This machine has a wonderful thread cutting system. I push a button and it ties off and cuts and all of that stuff, but it will leave some whiskers on the back of the quilt that I'm not gonna be fond of. And I wanna be able to bring that thread tail to the top for extra security. So for free motion machine quilting, I actually don't use those beneficial features that way. I go back to an old fashioned, drop the needle, bring it back up, and at the end, it's the same process, just in a backwards order. So, okay, let's do a quick comments check. Let's take these gloves off, see how everyone's doing. Uh, do I ever use templates? Robert's got a question. Do I ever use templates when I quilt? Um, so I have not started using acrylic templates with a ruler foot or ruler quilting. That's another style of free motion or aided free motion. Um, I've tried it. If There was a long time ago I did a video. It was fun at a quilt market and I did it, but I wasn't moving the quilt. I was only moving the ruler. So you're holding the ruler to move the quilt. Really cool and super accurate once you get dialed in, but I just haven't started doing it yet. I'm a bigger fan of just kind of taking some markings or sections of the quilt where I think about, like for an instance, hoping you can see. Right now I was just thinking, I want pebbles right here. I don't know what I want to do in the green. What I actually really know is how cool it would look is if I didn't do um, any quilting in the green and just stayed with the white and go out here. But the problem with that goes back to the earlier thing I was trying to teach. If I come back later on and I want to quilt into the green, I don't want to have stitched in the white and then stitched in the white. It's a small area here, but over here in these bigger areas that could become problematic. So I'm going into this quilt thinking I will quilt every color, every inch. I will quilt this thing to death. So now we need to figure out what we're going to do within this green space. Um, and I like to often use kind of that juxtaposition to keep things interesting. It's a great question. I don't use templates, but I'll often either use some markings or some thinking uh, in advance, and I'll use the sections of the quilt as barricades or barriers for certain elements of machine quilting. So keep it looking uniform but unique at the same time. And again, I learned that from Angela Walters as well. Um, she's an incredible machine quilter and even a better machine quilter teacher, if you ask me. So if you're looking for great, great, dedicated tips. That's what she does and she's doing a lot of it right now. Angela Walters uh, is doing a fantastic job with her machine quilting teaching. Uh, Christina Camelli, uh, Leah Day, all of these ladies are just incredible. Um, I just haven't worked with those other ladies as much so I don't know their styles as much. I know uh, Angela personally so I always feel comfortable to recommend my, my personal friends because I've worked with them and I know that they can they can do it. But the other ladies are great too, of course. Comments check. I love this. I'm, I'm hoping you're all having half as much fun as I'm having today. I can see we've got a lot of viewers out there. That's really, really cool. Um, oh, here's a fun one. Uh, you were surprised how quiet the machine was. They were saying you could hear me very well. And for me, it's funny because I can hear this little squeak going on. But because I've been teaching machine quilting for so many years, I know exactly what that squeak is. It's actually the spring in the foot. It's not the machine at all. And because I like the spring, I'm always willing to tolerate the bit of the squeak. And normally, I'm actually wearing very large headphones because I love music. You saw the guitar, right? But not only that, but with music, it kind of drowns out everything else. And now I get into the vibration with my hands. And I truly believe that that feeling vibration with my hands and the machine helps me keep a nice pace. You know, we're supposed to be, what, rubbing our head and patting our belly while we're doing this kind of stuff. And it does take some practice, but if you think about it long enough, you can do it. Don't ask me to switch hands, please. This will be very difficult to ask me to switch hands. But now I also realize I am standing in front of three live cameras on YouTube 
rubbing my belly and patting my head on a live video. It can be done. This is incredible. Incredible, folks. Look at what we're learning while we have all this free time at home. Okay, so the other things I want to talk about were on the machine itself. And these are just favorite accessories, um, things that I love. Hopefully you can order these online right now from your local quilt shop just down the road. They'll mail it to you. A lot of quilt shops, I checked in again this morning, a lot of quilt shops are still doing their curbside delivery. So please, especially during these times, remember we can shop online locally and we can keep that support right within our own community where it's going to be so important over the next few days. And we're kind of deciding here at Making It Fun, we're going to give this 30 more days. That's it. May 1st, we're back to having fun as normal, we hope. So let's just kind of set that as a goal. Let's put out, a, we're working on a 30-day calendar right now of wonderful content for all of you to keep enjoying and stuff. So I'm just going to set kind of my fingers crossed hopeful day, May 1st, back to life as normal. Until then, I will be pumping out tons and tons of stuff with this quote behind me. Rad. Okay, now I was talking about the machine a little bit and accessories. On the bed of the machine here, I've got um, this table, this extension table. This came with the machine. If you don't have one with your machine, a lot of times you can custom order them uh, from your local machine dealership. Uh, there's a couple of brands that make them to fit and you want it to fit your machine. What this does though, is it gives me a wider base for my hands, but really look at my shoulders. If I was on a small machine, when I, when I put my hands in too close, my shoulders naturally want to go up. So if I've got my hands a little bit wider, I can quilt more space. I don't have as much bulk of the quilt running into the sides of the machine, but it actually physically benefits my neck, my shoulders, my elbows, and you can quilt until you are fatigued. As soon as you get fatigued at the neck and the shoulders, you're gonna start making more jagged, jerky movements, and you're just gonna get more and more sore and tired, and it will actually make the quilting more uncomfortable down the road. So you're actually wiser to quilt for a little while, take a break, quilt for a little while, take a break, and start to build up this muscle memory. Because funny enough, I heard this years and years ago, but I really believe it to be true. When we're free motion machine quilting, you know, our wrists and our fingers are kind of locked. And those are our fine motor movement tools. Our elbows and our shoulders, our elbows and our shoulders are what do all of the work we're trying to do this little micro movement stuff with our big motor movement tools on our body. So it takes some retraining of our physical strength uh, as well to do that. So I have a nice bed that makes easier open space, but then I also have what's called a so slip mat. This is a Teflon top silicone back, so it, it adheres without sticking or leaving a mess on my machine. I can set this down and what this does now is it actually makes the top of the, the table even more slippery, which I absolutely love, which gives me the opportunity to move the quilt even more easily under the bed of the machine. Underneath that mat was a full bobbin and I'm using the bobbin generally that matches the thread that is on top or that just matches the back of the quilt. This particular quilt, I put a white backing on it, so I've got white back bobbin thread in there, and I'm gonna use that for the entire thing. I'm not concerned with the white specks showing up in the green stitching, but I might have been concerned with green specks if I had used green bobbin thread showing up in the white stitching. So I thought about that for a long time last night while I was setting up the machines and picking my threads and getting my extra bobbins wound. Because that's the other thing I do is I wind several bobbins when I sit down because once I'm in motion, I want to stay in motion, okay? Now for the next thing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and just load in some green thread. Um, I've got a medium green thread here. Doing a little comments check as well. I hope you're all enjoying having fun. I can still see the audiences out there. This is great. And you know, I will go back and check all the comment feeds, answer the questions to the best of my ability uh, after these live videos. That's what I'm spending a little bit of time doing each afternoon and having a lot of fun with it. So please keep going. We're, we can see you even if I can't exactly see you at the moment. Um, next thing I want to point out, um, Good thread maintenance. If you missed the maintenance video, um, good thread conversation, but I'm, I'm re-threading. So I have now cut the spool at the top of the, excuse me, cut the thread at the, at the spool. I'm getting batty. The presser foot, I have gotta have it in the up position. And with a free motion foot on, it's a little bit more challenging to see. So I just double checked myself to make sure that the presser foot was in the uppermost position. That opens my tension discs wide open. I'm gonna grab the thread at the needle 
and I'm going to pull the thread out in sewing direction, keeping all the lint moving out of the machine. And then as I prepare to re-thread, I'm just going to drop my new spool on and just give myself a moment here and re-thread it. Make sure I got it in there correctly. And then usually once I get about three quarters of the way threaded, or at least I know that the thread's through the tension discs, I will actually lower the presser foot to engage tension on my thread, which makes life even easier to get the last little parts threaded up. I've got a really cool needle threader that I just used there. So that worked out pretty cool. Now, let's see if we can't show you at home a really easy and good way to start your machine quilting. I'm so habitually addicted to these gloves. I love them. One time I was at home, I left my gloves at work when I used to have a quilt shop and they were at the store and I thought I'll just wear rubber gloves and it was great until I tried to take them off and my hands were sweaty with the rubber gloves. My hands never sweat in these machine gears gloves. Oh, and if you're buying these kinds of gloves, you want them to fit snug. Remember, it's giving you the traction you're after. Okay, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see real well or not. I'll do my best for you here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself kind of a seam, somewhere I can kind of hide my first stitch. I'm going to get a hold of my needle thread. <laughs> get a hold of myself there. I'm going to lift my foot for a second to open the tension so I can just pull extra thread out, right, so you can see better. Drop that foot again. Get right on target. I'm going to do a single stitch by dropping the needle one time and then right back up. If I pull on this thread now, I have access to my bobbin thread. I've got both threads up now. I hope you can see just a little bit of that. And now I'm taking, let's call it four or five stitches in place. And now I'm gonna begin some machine stitching. I'm gonna drop the needle, hold everything, come back here and I'm going to actually cut these thread tails right out of the way so that I'm not trying to avoid them. My brain can focus on what's going to do. Now I've got this wonderful little series of half square triangles that goes around here kind of in a perimeter. I didn't know what I was doing so I just took off and started doing something. So I think I'm just going to doodle in this green space um, and then build into maybe something that makes a little bit more sense later. But I really have been feeling that just enjoying the motions of machine quilting. I was practicing a little bit last night on a little warm-up piece. So what I will do in this is I'm going to try to make it not quite as dense looking as the original circles. So that that center actually lays down a little bit more. Oops. Okay. No problem. And this is a great learning lesson. I just broke thread and I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe I didn't get it threaded correctly too well before I took off. Maybe because I pulled on it. But either way, the bobbin is still connected and this is a great teachable moment for all of us. I'm hoping you can okay, see okay. The first thing I want to do is I actually want to bring my needle into the up position because I'm going to need to re-thread it. Okay. I have to look in here to see what went wrong and I'm looking around to see where the thread broke. And I was able to acquire it here at my take-up lever. And I'm going to pull a little thread to see if I had it snagging on something. And lo and behold, I do. It felt like it was running a little rough. So because of that, I'm going to put my foot up. No tension. Cut thread. That thread's a goner. Let's start over. Come back around, drop that foot now. Okay, that feels like that's gonna work nicer. More nicely, how am I supposed to say that? <laughs> Gotta love a good needle threader. Okay, so that's the first part. Getting everything re-threaded, making sure you kinda know what's going on. The next part now, I wanna lift my presser foot so I have a little easier motion, and I'm gonna try to back up about three or four stitches before the thread broke because I'm going to try to tie in there. It'll leave a little bit of, I'm going to say, a thread booger on the back of the quilt. So we're just going to have to live with that. But it will secure the top thread and keep it from unstitching later. I'm going to take one stitch to drop the needle. Make sure I'm on target. If I can take a few stitches in that spot, all the better. And now I'm going to try to carry on with the motion I was in. 
drop the needle, grab the scissors one more time, cut those thread tails out of there. We'll worry about the back later. Oop, thread everywhere. And now I'm just gonna come back in and continue playing with my fun doodle motion I was creating in the green. So I'm just gonna follow the green all the way around and then I will continually switch into fun swirl motifs into the white. Now I can also feel that I'm fighting the weight of the quilt hanging off of the edge over here and that's driving me nuts as well. And I keep pulling against it. As a matter of fact, I just broke the thread again. And that's no fun. And then I look over here at the clock and I can see I've already gone five minutes over time and that's no fun either. So what I probably should do real quick is just stop here for now we can always come back and do more free motion videos. As a matter of fact, as this video is wrapping it up, if you'll put in the comments, if you would ever want me just to maybe open up a camera and close it and just let it roll or something like that, that could be fun too. Who knows? Check in the comments over on Facebook. Fantastic. I'm glad to see he's got more friends logging in. Fantastic. Okay, so with that, as a matter of fact, I probably better sign off. I'm going to remind you all real quick, though, about our big bundle of batiks. Our, oh, I almost said it. I won't say that. So anyways, over on Instagram, on Monday, the prize will be given out. The contest rules will be there. We've got this big, beautiful bundle of batiks. If you were just signing into the live feeds today, um, here, the reason we have the bundle of batiks is the block of the month quilt along. Let's see where we are. I don't even know if I've got the right blocks. Either way, it's a beautiful quilt, and there are 12 in them. It is the Batik, Peek into Batik, Michael Miller's uh, beautiful quilt along. We've got the brand ambassadors that are participating. We've got a few beautiful free pattern there. There's a beautiful free pattern here for the recovery quilt from Material Girlfriends. And so, again, that's really what we're trying to do with our time here and our wonderful social media audience. Again, I want to say thank you to all of you. I want to remind you all to stay safe while we are enjoying our time and our shelter in place. I want to remind you all to be creative with your time, right? Especially those of you who might be a little bit like me, which is a busy brain, and therefore I've been a little bit prone to extra worry this week. And so every time I start getting myself feeling a little worried about anything, well, no matter what it is, I find myself, I just get up, wander over here, start working on the project, Grab the old box of cigars, pull it out, play a little, have some fun, you know, and just enjoy. The other thing that I love knowing is that my family's here, they're safe, they're doing well. Knowing that you're all out there, you're safe, you're doing well. We're going to have a blast tomorrow. No, today's Friday, so tomorrow's Saturday. I'm not exactly sure what the plan is yet, but we will let you know real soon. Please, please, please stay posted to all of our social media on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. I love you all. I appreciate you all. I'm going to see if I can wander over here and get these cameras turned off. Thank you all very much. Make sure you win that bundle of boutique on Monday. You're going to love it.